You've probably heard about the government signing up to cut our greenhouse gas emissions by 40%, or around 4% a year for the next 12 years. But at the same time, the national herd has exploded in recent years to 7 million head of cattle. And it's set to grow even more next year. What a lot of people don't realise is these two points are almost mutually exclusive. You can hit your targets or allow the national herd to increase, but it seems you can't do both. The first thing to know is we're missing our emissions targets. There are no ifs, ands or buts about it. The Environmental Protection Agency says we've missed it by 5 million tonnes in 2018 and we're not nearly on track to meet the Paris Climate Accord plan either. The other key thing to know is that agriculture produces 34% of all our emissions. It is by a long shot our biggest emissions creating industry. Farmers bemoan the fact that their carbon offset is often ignored when dealing with their emissions impact. They say they get little or no credit for the hedgerows, the green areas and other ways they actually help absorb carbon. Yet the fact is most emissions come from dairy and beef farming. To put it simply, we've got a lot of cows burping out a lot of gas. And the third thing to know is agriculture and food production accounts for 10% of employment here. The business is massive. We don't have the car manufacturers of Germany or the chemical production plants of France. Agriculture is the key industry here. We're really good at it, especially at dairy farming. Our climate suits it, and it looks like dairy is going to remain a big business. All this leaves policymakers in a bind when deciding on the best way to reduce emissions and meet our targets. They could try to reduce the size of the national herd, but that risks hitting one of our biggest industries in the process, not to mention hitting the wider economy. Or they could focus elsewhere, look at other sectors and their emissions, but most experts believe that would be ignoring the elephant or cow in the room. Or they could try to find ways to change the agriculture industry, in the process cutting the rate of emissions coming from there to take a big chunk out of our overall emissions totals. Changing what we do and how we do it might seem like the best solution. New incentives to push farmers towards lowering emissions or subsidies for the best practices or use of new technologies. But there's a problem with that. Irish farmers are already some of the best performers in Europe when it comes to getting bang for their buck when it comes to emissions. Board Bia says our dairy farmers are top of the class in Europe, our beef farmers are top five. While there are studies which call that into question, we know one thing. Our green grass and moderate weather means our animals eat less feed than anywhere else. When they are grazing in the fields, they are way ahead of other countries when it comes to emissions efficiency. What'll make a potentially hard decision even harder is that agriculture is coming into the firing line in Europe and beyond. The industry is propped up by subsidies from the EU, but the EU says it's going to cut environmentally damaging subsidies. Agriculture at the top of the list. The new agriculture commissioner talks a lot about biodiversity. He wants smaller farms. He's already put big factory farms on his hit list. Ireland is responsible, but Europe will be a big influence on what happens. Irish farmers have proven they can adapt to environmental demands. The question is, how many are willing? And how long will it take the rest to do what needs to be done? Until that happens, it seems our emissions targets will be more of an aspiration than anything else.